And remember, if you miss something, you want to catch something, and if you're new to our channel, you can always find us on Gospel Spreading Church YouTube. Join us online for Bible study. The Holy Spirit of God, that's going to be the topic. And on Monday night, it will be Assistant Tommy Smith, Why Such a Study? And on Thursday, Elder Quentin Jones, the personality of the Holy Spirit. If you need more information or if you would like to be a part, info us at info at gospelspreadingchurch.org. Help for the journey. Every Wednesday, we have the throne room. So join us for midweek hope, intercessory prayer, and a word from the Lord. It's from 7 to 7.30 on Wednesday, and it will be conducted by digging Kevin Clayton. If you have a prayer request, you may type it in at info at gospelspreadingchurch.org. This is Black History Month, and as we are empowered, we are empowering our youth Yay. to participate in our Gospel Spreading Church annual Black History presentation. So if you'd like to participate, please contact our local youth leaders. Yeah. We'd like to hear from the youth's perspective. Mm -hmm. A black NASA scientist named Lonnie Johnson invented the super soaker. And he invented it by accident while working on a jet pump project. Lonnie Johnson spent his childhood tinkering with objects, including his sister's dolls. And after scholarship and earning a scholarship to Tuskegee University, he found a job at Nassau. And then he invented an iconic water gun while puzzling over a different project in the 1980s. And everybody knows sometimes in the summertime we have fun with our children and grandchildren getting blasted <laughs> with the super soaker. Yes. I know I have been a few times. So it was invented by a young black man. Amen. The Gospel Spreading Church, Strong Marriages. February is Love Month. What will you do? That's right. I'm in red. Some of us are in red. <laughs> <laughs> Valentine's Day is almost here. And I can't wait for my Valentine's Day. Mm. It's the, mm. <laughs> okay, y'all. <laughs> it's the mm. most romantic holiday of the year. Mm. For some of you, though, it can seem a bit cliche. Uh -huh. Well, I'm not going to make it cliche because love is not cliche. Flowers, chocolates, a romantic dinner, the same thing year after year after year. <laughs> but this year, why not approach Valentine's Day a little bit different? You're probably familiar with the love languages by, Derry, by Dr. Gary Chapman. And the Gospel Spreading Church will be sharing a quick refresher on the love languages along with some great gift ideas. And I'm excited about the love languages that will be coming out because I'm going to see how many I can get in. Mm. All right, the Mary E. Mishaw Scholarship 2024. <laughs> Who can apply? Current members of the Gospel Spreading Church, newly admitted and currently enrolled college students, possessing a, commu a cumulative GPA of 2.5 out of a 4.0 scale. Scholarship deadlines, April 30th, 2024, at 11.59 p.m. So if you get it in, 12.01 a.m., it may not be counted. That's the deadline. To receive an application, send an email to info at gospelspreadingchurch.org. It's the Gospel Spreading Church, Murray E. Mishaw Scholarship. And I'd like, I'd like um, to remind you, every little bit helps. Because it, today's uh, cost of education is not cheap. So if you have your youth that is ready to head for college or whatnot, get them involved 
and submit an application. The Gospel Spreading Church memory verse. Jesus' promises and commands are as true for us as they were for the disciples. This memory verse is found in Acts 1 and 8. Be ye, but ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon ye, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. The mission is not finished. Mm. God has called and empowered us mm -hmm. to take the gospel to the world. And you know, we're hearing a lot about Samaria and Judea mm -hmm. in the news. So the word of God does not lie. He talked about this a long time ago and we still have to pray for the wars that are going on. We don't know, but God knows. Our weekly nugget, are you ready for God to move in your family? Do you long to see God at work in your workplace? Are you eager for God to change your community? The time for waiting is over. God is moving. The activated church is the hope of the world. As we follow the Holy Spirit's lead and operate in his power, the gospel spreads to the ends of the earth. People meet Jesus and their lives begin to change. The greedy become generous, the foolish become wise, mm. the selfish become servants. Are you ready for change around you? If so, begin by asking God to activate something new in you. Yes. Jesus tells the disciples in Acts 1 and 8 that they will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes. What comes to mind when you think of the word power? Does your life exhibit the power of God? Who can you share the gospel with today? Who can you invite to church? And that's our weekly nugget. Men ought to always pray and not to faint. That's found in Luke 18 and 1. Pray for our sick and shut in. Pray for the bereaved families. Pray for the spreading of the gospel. And we have a special prayer request that we're going to ask the saints to pray for Sister Cecilia Brooks. Yes, 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 Amen. yes. The next voice you will hear will be coming from our very own pastor, Elder Marshall J. Green, Jr. Part two, turn on the power. May God bless you. Amen. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, forget not all his benefits. Good morning, everyone. Amen. It's good to see you here today. We're thankful that you got the message. Amen. That we are here at 1130 a.m. And we want to also share with those who are online. We have a new YouTube link. Uh, gospel, uh, GSC slash Baltimore 4310 There's our handle. And we are grateful, amen, that uh, all of those who are connected to Gospel Spreading Church YouTube, it is here also, but we're underneath of that another layer, amen, and we're grateful for this opportunity that we have today to come to your homes, for you to be here with us today to celebrate what God has done. Has God been good to you? Amen, amen, amen. God has truly been good to me. Amen. And I thank, I'm thankful and grateful for all that he has and has continually done for us. I'm grateful today, amen, that uh, we've had uh, a little heavy heart here uh, this week and this weekend as we learned that uh, Sister Seely's uh, uh, grandson was taken from us. And my heart was just overjoyed, amen, as we saw her walk into the sanctuary today. Amen. And Sister Seely, we just want you to know that we're praying with you. Amen. We don't know why, but we know that God has got you. Amen. And he has promised to be your very present help in your time of need. And we know, amen, that he will do just that. 
We thank you, amen, and we pray that you are excited to hear, amen, the conclusion. I pray it's the conclusion of this message of turn the power on. Turn the power on. We're grateful, amen, for this season that we're in. Amen. In the season of Empower Word. Empower Word. This theme this year, amen, is all about, amen, not what will happen, but what already has happened and what God has already given us, amen, to fulfill and to complete the mission at hand, the mission given to the believers of Jesus Christ. And I am certainly excited to see what tomorrow is going to bring. Why do I say that? I say that because so many of us, amen, have been beguiled, been depressed, been down, been confused, amen, about what God, about, about what God has in store for you and I to do. Amen. But once we realize, amen, what is at our disposal, Amen. Our enemy can no longer, amen, keep us down. Our enemy can no longer keep us from uh, 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 accessing what we need to fulfill the mission. And our mission, amen, is not down here, amen, all, it is down here on earth, amen, but it is not, amen, a manly call, but it is a gospel call, it is a godly call, and we're grateful, amen, that he has chosen you and I to be a part of this mission. If you would stand with me, and some people are going to say, really, we're going to stand? Yeah, stand with me. We want to honor God in the reading of this scripture. Amen. And many of us may be able to say this by heart, but we're going to read Acts 1 and 8. Amen. And we're going to lay out Acts 1 and 8. And then we're going to go to Galatians chapter 5, verse number 25. Acts chapter number 1, verse number 8. Let's read that together. But ye shall receive Oh, wait a minute. Y'all, wait a minute. Y'all got y'all got y'all got to do a little better than that. Yeah. Amen. Everybody on YouTube, you all y'all help us out. Read this loud and proud. Amen. Let's read it together. But ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be my witnesses, both unto me unto in Jerusalem and all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Amen. Now let's look at that verse in Galatians chapter 5 verse number 25 and let's read that together. Amen. If we live in the spirit, let us also Amen. You may be seated. Blessed Father, we thank you for this space called Sanctuary. We thank you, Lord, for another opportunity, Lord, to lift up the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God, we love you with everlasting love. And we thank you, God, for loving us so much that you gave us your only begotten Son. Lord, we thank you for giving us the unction to want to come to hear what the Spirit has to say unto our church. God, we're excited for, Lord, how we don't understand why, but we're excited excited, Father, that you have chosen us, Lord, with these great heavenly blessings, Lord, to do your will. We are your foot soldiers here on this earth today. And God, as we, Lord, are unraveling and unwrapping and getting a deeper understanding of your word, God, we, we pray, Lord, that it does become more power unto our feet, more energy into our spiritual walk. Lord, more witnessing, Lord, to, to the lost, Lord, that they may know, Lord, that yes, there is a God and God has a perfect plan for each and every one of us. God, we pray. Lord, that as you open up this word to us today, God, we humbly say unto you, have thine own way, have thine own way. You are the potter, we are the clay, mold us and make us after thine own will, as we're we to yield and still. We bless you and praise you in Jesus' name. Let the people of God say, amen, amen. So, back to the drawing board. Amen. Last week we began to speak of, amen, this uh, these items on our table. And the items on our table all has to do with a flashlight. Here, amen, we see the deconstructed flashlight. We have the case. We have the batteries. We have the lens. We have the most important thing, and that is the bulb. Amen. And we realize that the bulb represents who? 
Amen. The bulb represents our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This case is us. This case is us. Amen. And we are here as his children to do one thing, and that is to illuminate the bulb, amen, the light of Jesus Christ. Amen. But we also understand in order to illuminate Jesus, amen, we have to have, amen, something that will, amen, turn the light on. Amen. And what will turn on the light? Amen. The case can't do it by itself. Amen. The lens can't do it by itself. Amen. Amen. What it takes to illuminate Jesus is when all the components come together. And especially what I have in my hands right now. What do I have in my hands right now? It is batteries. Amen. As we look at what we are and what we are, amen, and how we are to illuminate Jesus, we cannot be illuminating, amen, Jesus Christ without inside of us, amen, a power source. Amen. And that power source is not inside of human flesh, amen, meaning that we can turn on all by ourselves. Amen. No, my friends. Amen. As a matter of fact, the Bible says unto us, all of our righteousness is as filthy rags. Amen. As a matter of fact, amen, the Bible says there's none righteous, no, not one. In order for Jesus to be illuminated in our life, we have to be able to be empowered with the Holy Spirit. The Bible, amen, says, amen, our focal scripture of today, of this year, amen, and as God, amen, is continually empowering us, amen, is that ye shall receive power after that. The Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit is come upon you. Last week we talk, talked about getting the Spirit. Amen. And we were breaking down, amen, the necessity for us to know. If we, if we accept Jesus Christ in our life, we also, amen, have received along with Jesus, amen, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is not a thing. Holy Spirit is not a place. Holy Spirit is not a towel. Holy Spirit is not something you put on and off. Holy Spirit is a person, is a presence inside of your life. Amen. And we also learned last week that Jesus is the Spirit. Amen. Amen. How we understand that sometimes is yet a challenge. Why? Because we really, amen, can't think totally like God. It's really confusing to us how God himself could part himself in three separate beings, three separate entities, yet they work together. Amen. And if we are grateful for how he does it, but we don't ever understand, amen, why he did it, amen, but we are certainly glad. That he did it. Amen. We're grateful that he gave us his very best. Himself, his son, amen. Jesus Christ. But as we get the spirit, amen, we know that, amen, the first Corinthians has taught us that we are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Amen. We are the resident agent, if you will, for God's spirit in this world today. Receiving the spirit of God, receiving the spirit's power, amen, is after we, amen, have received Jesus as Lord and Savior, we also have received his power within us. But, my friends, as we explained last week, amen, Holy Spirit inside of us will not override your decision making. Amen. We, amen, are, are, have been given the gift of freedom of choice. That's good and that's bad. You see, my friends, God doesn't want a robot. That's right. He can create a robot to worship him. No, 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 no. He wants us to freely 
worship him, to serve him, and to love him back. Amen. For, for just who he is. And we have so many benefits from being a child of God. We get into that a little bit later. But the most important benefit that he has given every one of us believers is his spirit. As we have received his spirit, we try to explain like last week, amen, it's like following your GPS. It's, it's like following ways. You put it in for the destination, and it will show you the way to go. Amen. amen? But you can override and go a different way. And if you override and go a different way, we are, amen, subject to, to all that the other way gives us. Uh, Amen. Yes, we have freedom of choice, but we also will be the bearer of that choice. What do you mean? Amen. If I go down the road, amen, and I see a sign that says 30 miles an hour, and I go 90 miles an hour, amen, I have decided not to obey the sign, but to go as quickly as I can as I'm trying to catch up to my dear deacons. No, I'm just kidding. Amen. But as I go, if I get a ticket, you know this, me like camera? If I get a ticket, guess what happens? I pay the consequences. Now, I will say, amen, there are times, Deacon Mac, that you get a ticket and you were not guilty. Innocent. Amen. Uh, my daughters were driving my car. Y'all know the rest of the story. <laughs> they were driving my car with my registration on it. And as they went and they got a parking ticket, it didn't go to them. Y'all right. ain't got to pray with me, are you? It did not go to them. It went to me. And guess what? I paid the ticket. Oh, I definitely let them know, Deacon Mac, that yes, the dudettes, amen, got dad in trouble. Amen. But why did I pay the ticket? I paid the ticket because the car belongs to me, A, and B, it is my name on the line. Y'all got that? Now hang on to this. Amen. Once you are a child of God, you belong to Jesus. You belong to Jesus. And when you mess up, guess who gets the ticket in the mail? Y'all going to get this in a minute. Guess who gets the ticket in the mail? It doesn't go on your account. It gets delivered to your father's address. And when your father opens up, that guilty charge against you, all he sees is what his son Jesus did for you. Y'all ain't going to pray with me. What I am saying is, amen, because of what Jesus did, although you are wrong, even though he doesn't see you, he sees the cross of Jesus Christ. All y'all to be happy about that. Amen. Because what Jesus did, amen, we have hope for tomorrow. And although we don't dot every I and cross every T, we got the blood of Jesus Christ. And the Bible says that the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all unrighteousness. But after we receive the power, God has given us that power not to stay the same way that we have been. Yeah. He wants us. He has declared unto us. He wants us to be witnesses. Amen. To the local territories, your local communities. Amen. To Jamea, Jer uh, Jerusalem, Samaria. Amen. And to the uttermost parts of the world. He has given us the authority to speak on his behalf. Oh, somebody ought to be happy about that. Amen. But receiving his power is through receiving his son, Jesus Christ. Well, how do I know that, amen, I have the power? 
Well, my brothers and sisters, I am so glad that you're here today because sometimes, amen, we have been, have, have been taught, learned, and explored methods of receiving the power of the Holy Spirit. And how do you know you have the power of the Holy Spirit? Tell it here on the front bench and tell, you all going to pray with me, until you receive the power of the Holy Spirit. But did you know that the Bible gives us certain tests to prove that the spirit is in control. If this is, the mo this is one of the most important decisions we will ever make, we will certainly know that we made, amen, the right decision if we test it for results. First, the Bible teaches us that when we are saved, the spirit, amen, regenerates inside of us. Amen. It makes us a new creature. Amen. Those, amen, that have received Jesus Christ as a new creature in Christ Jesus. The Bible says that behold, all things have become new. Amen. So let me ask you this. Are all things new for you now? Come on. Are you any different? than what you were before you were saved. Then the Spirit gives us, amen, some spiritual gifts. And then these are different from the natural talents, amen, that you have, amen, from birth, amen, and that you learn to, to shape and, and sharpen inside of your life. Some of your gifts, amen, have been, amen, uh, uh, started out as talents that we have, amen. But when you, amen, get some of your gifts, amen, you give them to God, and after you give your gifts to God, amen, his spirit sanctifies them, amen, and you dedicate them to God for his use and his glory. Others may be, may be completely, and sometimes some of us will get completely new abilities that you never knew that you had after the Holy Spirit has come upon you. But no matter when you receive them, your spiritual gifts or abilities that the Spirit energizes, amen, to equip you for service for the kingdom. You see, every believer is assigned a job from heaven. Amen. And he wants you, he, heaven wants you to accomplish this, amen, through you on this earth. So the Spirit gives us all what we need to get the job done. Do you know what your job is? Learn what your spiritual gifts are. Amen. And it will help you, amen, to tell you what God has expectations of you. Many of you know, amen, my spiritual gift is not singing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Amen. That is not my spiritual gift. Amen. God made room for me when he wrote in the Bible, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. And every once in a while, I get a thumbs up that I got the key right. But some people just can just open their mouth and just, the, the gates of heaven just open up. Yeah. Amen. Maybe because I'd be prideful if I could sing Deacon Macy. Amen. But, but he hasn't given me that gift. Amen. But no matter what your gift is, when you give it back, when you, no matter what your talent is, when you give it back to God, he sanctifies that gift, that talent. Amen. To be used for kingdom use. Amen. They are ways of letting, amen, you partner with God in building the kingdom. Amen. Then, amen, to help you get comfortable in, in, in serving God, amen, he then gives us something else. Let's look at Galatians chapter 6, verse number 22. Amen. Galatians chapter 6, verse number 22. Amen. He gives everyone, 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 amen, this gift. And it tells us in Galatians 6 and 22, he gives us the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit. Because there's five listed, some of us think that there is multiple. But no, when you read the Bible, it says the fruit of the Spirit. 
And the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, God, good godliness, faith, meekness, and temperance. Amen. Notice it is singular. Amen. It is not fruits of the Spirit. Amen. The fruit of the Spirit, that means that all the fruit comes to you at one time. Amen. When you receive Jesus as Lord and Savior, amen, he gives inside of his spirit this fruit that will be exhibited inside of your life. Every believer, amen, has all these wonderful qualities inside of you. But remember, it is your choice to allow that fruit uh -huh. to be manifest amen. by obeying the lead of the Holy Spirit. Amen. But we will see when we obey the leading of the Spirit. Amen. You will be able to live a victorious Christian life, conquering your sins, getting your prayers answered, staying on top of your problems, feeling a boldness in your ministry, seeing the results in your witness, amen, and enjoying your fellowship with Christ as we yield to the fruit of the Spirit through, amen, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You'll be happy in Jesus alone. These qualities, amen, everything, amen, is becoming new. Realizing your spiritual gift, claiming, amen, the fruit of the Spirit, enjoying a victorious life, amen, these are proofs that you are saved. If you don't have them, you're not living in the spiritual power and authority that God has given you. You are being bewildered and confused, dazed and amazed, amen, because, amen, Satan is blinding you for what God has already given you. You don't have to walk around, amen, thinking, am I, can I, will I? You will walk around and complete, amen, our absolute agreement in the spirit, amen, that greater is he that is in me yeah. Yeah. than he that is in the world. Yeah. We're trying to do the best we can and good enough. Amen. But when we walk in the Spirit, we have fellowship, amen, with our Heavenly Father. Amen. And we will, amen, uh, begin to illuminate the goodness of the Lord. So we couldn't let the flashlight symbolize, amen, our spiritual her heritage. Amen. But it's something about the flashlight. Come on. You can have all these components together. But if you have a lens that is dirty, it blocks the light from shining. You got to clean it up. And that's the job for us to do, to clean the lens up in order for the light to be able to shine, for others can see your good works and glorify your Father, which is heaven, in heaven, living daily in the Spirit's power. We, we may have all these things that we talked about. We still have not the power that God has, amen, in, in store for us. There are, there are two things that must be done, amen. Do you know what they are when we, amen, uh, 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 do we, we find ourselves that we don't have all that we think? that God has, that, that we should be doing for him. Amen. Let, let's, let's try it with the flashlight. With all these pieces and they all work together, what happens? You get light and they shine. But sometimes, amen, although there's all these pieces and they're put together and you turn on the power, what happens? There's nothing happening. Why is that? Well, sometimes we need to start to look at what is keeping the light from shining. Mm -hmm. What's the matter? Why isn't it shining? Let's check everything again. Let's do some soul searching. Let's go back to Psalms chapter 51. It said, create in me. 
a clean heart, O oh God, and renew the right spirit inside of me. Let's check again. We'll, we'll do some soul searching and let's start praying. Let's start hunting. Let's start to learn where the problem is. The bulb is not the problem. Y'all know that. The bulb is not the problem. Amen. The case, amen, normally is the problem. And as we start to break down why this isn't working, we have to start to take and deconstruct What's inside of here? The light works. I got the battery. I got the power. I got the Holy Spirit. But what else is in here? Oh, I got to dig, dig, dig down inside. Y'all ain't going to pray with me, are you? And when I start digging deep down inside, look what I found. I found some hate. I found some lying. I found some uh, evil speaking. I found some uh, deceitfulness. I found some arguing, complaining. I, they call that grumbling. And all. I, I find these things inside of my case. And you know what that was doing? All these stuff that we got along the way of life that was inside of my case was blocking the connectivity of the power to get to the light. But after you get rid of that junk, after you get rid of the junk, after you get rid of unconfessed Sin. First yeah. John 1 and 9. Amen. 1 John 1 and 9. Amen. The word of God tells us, amen. And 1 John 1 and 9, amen, was not written to the sinner. It was written to the church. Amen. Can you get that for me, Sister Robin? 1 John chapter 1, verse number 9. The Bible says that if we confess our sins, yeah. this is church folk, y'all. Y'all got to know this. Amen. If you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive you from your sins and to what? Cleanse, Cleanse us from all this stuff comes out of your case. The Holy Spirit then is there with the power. Amen. Amen. And then Jesus can shine through you. Amen. Y'all ain't going to pray with me. Amen. Amen. You Do you remember what happened? Amen. In, in there. Now, everything seems to be in order. Amen. But the light isn't going to shine when there's something wrong. Amen. Oh, yes, you have to. You can turn on the switch. You can have all the components together. But if you have unconfessed sin inside of you, you cannot shine for Jesus Christ. Amen. Do you remember what happened in the Bible each time the Spirit came down upon the people? Amen. What did they do before the day of Pentecost? They got together yeah. and they prayed yeah. 10 days in the upper room. And then something happened. Amen. What did Peter and Paul do when they met the believers, amen, who didn't have the Spirit? They laid hands on them. Amen. But the, the transition wasn't the laying of the hands. It's what they did when they laid on the hands. They prayed. Amen. And the power came down upon them. Amen. The way you live, amen, in the Spirit's power is when you invite the Spirit to take over control of your life. And my brothers and sisters, this is not a one-time thing for us to do. We got to do this each and every day. We got to uh, allow, amen, Holy Spirit to control our lives from the time we wake up in the morning as we walk walk along our journey until we lay our head down and even when we lay our head down Lord bless me, Lord keep me, Lord keep the, the wavering walls out of my mind Lord that I may continue to focus on you my friends it is so amazing what happens when I go to visit someone 
who has, amen, the spirit of the Lord inside of their life. And they have dementia. It's something amazing what happens in every time. I am totally amazed. Dementia is a disease that makes you lose your a touch of reality. Uh, you, they may not remember what happened 10 minutes ago, 5 minutes ago. Amen. And, and they may not even remember their family member that is there with them right now. And I have been in the room just certainly recently. I was in the room with, uh, at a nursing home over here, amen, with, with Sister uh, 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 Morel Page, amen. And, and although she kind of recognized me, and although she was just talking about things that weren't really relevant to the time, amen, but as soon as I started talking about Jesus, right. something happened. And as soon as we begin to sing, my Savior, I shall sing. Oh, something happened on the inside of her. Her spirit was quickened. She picked up, the Savior, I shall sing, will be enough for me. I'll praise him for his sacrifice. Oh, cruel old Calvary. I'm talking about when the spirit is inside of you, something is going to bubble outside of you. That's when the spirit is in control of your life. Amen. And it will begin to be manifest inside of you. But my friends, we have to repent each and every day. Every day. We have to repent I mean, of known sins of omission and sins of commission. Sins that we know that we did and sins that we're not aware of. Did y'all know that y'all do stuff that God's not pleased with? But some of us do it in ignorance. Amen. And thank God he doesn't cut you off at your knees because of your ignorance. Right. Oh so how much more should we be to one another? Y'all ain't going to pray with me. Yeah. Yeah. What do I mean by that? Everyone doesn't grow at the same pace and at the same time inside of their understanding. Amen. I thank God for the word that says, amen, for such were some of you. I was one of those that didn't understand. I am one of those that don't have everything locked up in the Bible, walking in my life, but I do know, amen, I do not want to habitually sin against the Lord. What does that mean? I, the things I know are wrong, I don't want to continue to do it over and over and over again. And as a matter of fact, God has given me his spirit so that I, amen, had the power not to do it over and over and over again. You see, if I continue to do it over and over again, I am clouding the lens so I can't be seen. So Jesus' light can't be shined. But when I stop habitually sinning, I can shine for Jesus Christ. You see, if you try, and my friends, as we look at where we're at today, amen, we can try to do everything on our own. But it's like this. If you try to solve your own problems, you'll bear your own consequences. But if you give each day to God, he will bear the responsibility. Oh, glory, hallelujah. And he'll always do what's the best for you as you walk, amen, in this journey of life. And my friends, sometimes we don't see what he's doing. We can't understand how he is working, but we have to rely on that all things work together for the good. Amen. We, he may be allowing us to go through our valley where we are right now. Amen. But as we are going through our valley, he is, amen, allowing us to give him glory. Yeah. And something happens when you give God the glory. Yeah. Amen. amen. When praises goes up, right. blessings come down. 
Amen. And God will lead you, amen, to, amen, a safe place. Amen. But if you give each day to God, he'll bear the responsibility. He'll always do, what, do what's best for you. Amen. And we can call on the promises, amen, that he has recorded in his word. Amen. And we, we have all, he has all authority that he has given unto you. Amen. You can say, I am the head and not to tell. Amen. You can say, amen, Lord, you said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Then you promise all these things will be added unto me. Amen. You say, in all your ways acknowledge him. And you promise to direct my paths. Yeah. Amen. Then when you believe it, amen, he can do it. He can make things, amen, all new in your life. Amen. When you believe it, you begin to get calm in the midst of the storm. When you believe it, when you believe the secret of living is dependent on his spirit, you don't fret over your, your problems and your situation. You're happy, although it seems like you should be sad. Amen. And that's the secret to living in the spirit. Amen. Remember, it's not how much of the spirit you have, but how much of the uh, how much power the spirit has inside of you. How do I turn? the flashlight on. How do I turn the power on? I make a conscious decision mm -hmm. to do it. Mm -hmm. Diggy Mac, I got in trouble last week because I didn't take the flashlight home. I left it here. Sister Anna said, where's my light? I said, it's at the church. Well, this light, y'all can see that it is pretty bright. Amen. And it works very well when it's charged. But when it's not charged, it don't do any good. But my friends, when the light comes on, you can shine for him. You have to make a conscious decision to turn the light on. God is giving you all the components that you need inside of you when you receive him. This is you. He's giving you the batteries, the Holy Spirit. He's giving you the light, Jesus Christ. This is a part of you, the lens. It's up to you to keep the lens clean. It's up to you to keep continuity. In other words, don't allow anything to block the power to come from the Holy Spirit to the light. That is your job. That is my job. And when we, amen, trust him, he will do his job. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him. And yes, he will. He shall direct thy paths. I make a conscious decision to do, to turn the light on when I push the, push the button. Amen. Turn the power on. Let the power flow through you. The spirit fills you, but only when you ask him to do so. That's an important part. You see, all of it is here, but it can't shine until I consciously make that decision. And my friends, we have to consciously make the decision to shine for Jesus Christ. Amen. You have inside of you everything that it takes, amen, to draw someone to Jesus Christ. But you have to let it shine. Amen. If you are trying, if this whole building was dark and black and you wanted to help someone to get out, and you were the only one with the light. You would turn on the light. You would grab them by the hand. Amen. And you would say what? Follow me. Yeah. And my friends in this world today, there's a lot of people who don't have the light you have. Some people that are your brothers and sisters in Christ. 
their light is dim or blocked because of unconfessed sin. But you can help them. Don't judge them, but you can help them. How do you help them? By showing them and telling them what you learned. Baby, I know what you mean. They get on my nerves to the nth degree. But I ain't going to talk about them, child. I'm going to pray for them. I'm going to help them where I can. Amen. Well, you know how they treated you? They can't say they treated me any worse than they treated to Jesus. Amen. And as I walk through this journey, I know Jesus can give me the victory to conquer sin, flesh, and the devil. Amen. So what will happen when you turn on the light? What will happen? When you turn on the power, your life will be pure. Your witness will be bolder. Your prayers will be answered. Your joy will be contagious. Your family and your church, amen, will be richer because you're walking daily by the power of Jesus Christ. If you walk in the light as he is in the light, you have fellowship one with another. My friends, it's important for us to know that we only can shine after we have all the components that are, going to, uh, are together. And perhaps you are an empty vessel needing all the components together. Well, my friends, in order for us to walk in victory, we must begin by amassing, assembling what we need to shine for Jesus. Amen. You see, you can't just say that you are. you got to have him inside of you. Amen. There's many that are in the world today that says they are believers. They are Christians. But if they have not confessed and submitted their lives to the authority of Jesus Christ, yeah. they cannot walk in victory. But after you receive him, you shall receive the power. Amen. And you will walk in victory as you yield to the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. Yes. If you by chance are wondering why you are wobbling in your walk, can't seem to get started, always stumbling versus walking in victory, May I invite you to just do what I had to do and many others had to do, and that is to accept the gift of Jesus Christ. God has given his only begotten son to us, and when we receive him, we also receive the gift of his spirit, not to be separated from you, that you show up at church on Sunday and there's the Spirit? No. The Spirit will be with you through all your journeys in your life. Amen. And he will lead you into all truths. He wants to be your best friend. Mm -hmm. In this world, I got one BFF. That's that one glowing over there, Sister Anna. On this earth. But in this world, my best friend is Jesus. For what he has done for me, I never forget what he's done for me. Now, I'm glad to tell you today, what he's done for me, he'll do for you if you receive Jesus as Lord and Savior. And if you've never done that before, the invitation stands as it stood for me and so many others Amen. worldwide. He says, I stand at the door and knock. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He's got a plan for you, 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 and you that is out there in YouTube. He's got a plan for you of peace and prosperity. He doesn't want you to be troubled. He doesn't want you to be afraid. He wants you to walk in confidence and victory. Not, we found out here in Baltimore, where we walk in Man's confidence, we'd be going to the Super Bowl. But we can't walk in man's confidence. we got to walk into the authority of the Holy Spirit, God's confidence. Amen. And we do that when we surrender our life 
to God. And we can do that right now. Won't you pray with me? Father in heaven, we thank you for your plan of salvation. And God, I come with my friend here today who has been not walking victoriously. Lord, I have one friend here who has never received you. And God, today, we come, Lord, on his behalf, on her behalf. Lord, confessing that we are a sinner and need a savior. We believe that Jesus died on the cross, was raised on the third day. Lord, we thank you, Father, for our knowledge that we need a savior. And we thank you for what you gave us through your son, Jesus Christ. Lord, today we surrender our life to you. And God, we receive the cleansing blood of Jesus upon our life. Lord, that washes away all of our sin. And most importantly, now, Lord, you see only Jesus when you look at our sin. And God, we thank you for the gift that you've given us through Jesus. And we thank you for receiving your spirit today. And help us, Lord, to learn to yield as the spirit teaches us along our life's journey. And God, I have another friend here. who, oh Lord, Father, who has been not walking in the authority that you've given them. Lord, their light has been covered, hidden. Lord, Jesus has not been able to shine. Because of unconfessed sin, Lord, we have blocked the connectivity. We have blocked the ability for Jesus to shine. But, Father, we thank you for 1 John 1 and 9. Lord, we know that we are still yours. Lord, but we want to shine brighter for you. Amen. So, Father, as we confess, I don't know what my friend is confessing now, but, God, you know. And Lord, I thank you for the assurance that we have in your word. Lord, that if we confess, you are faithful and just to forgive. Lord, and we thank you for cleansing us even now from all unrighteousness. God, we thank you, Lord. And we look forward to the great things that you have in store for us along this journey of life. Father, we also, Lord, want to stand, Lord, in the stead of our dear sister Celie. God, you know the burnt heart and the burden that her family is going through right now. But Father God, we know, Lord, that you are a burden bearer. Lord, you're able to show up in this situation, Lord, to shine light. And Father, I pray that you will give Sister Seely, Father, the, the, intestinal, the intestinal fortitude to shine for you, to let, Lord, the world around her know that her hope is not in tangible things, but her hope is in her Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And God, as she yields to you, Lord, we know that this life will not go down Lord, Father, uh, 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 embarrassed, Father, but it will go down in glory, glorifying you. Yes. Lord, we thank you and we praise you for all that you've done. Lord, we help us, Lord, to walk in that authority. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen. amen. Sister Macy. Thank you, Pastor, for that message, for that reminder, and the instruction how to turn on the power. Let us stand and be dismissed at this time. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Walk with Jesus, and you will walk in victory. May God bless you. Thank you for joining us. Remember our new 